<laughs> it's not one of the groomsmen in a shark costume, and whatever people Andrea usually do. <laughs> I love you. I love you. I don't feel nervous anymore. That's I feel good. a lot better. That's nice. I'm so happy to see you. I'm happy to see you too. Yeah, I was and I kiss you.
Everyone, please stand. On behalf of Andrea and Justin, I welcome you today to the celebration of marriage. We have assembled together in the presence of God to celebrate the joining of this man and this woman in holy matrimony. It is indeed a joyful time, and well it should be, in which we are able to witness the love of these two individuals expressed in the joining of their lives together for life. So we invite you to join with us as participants in the service, not only to witness this union, but to renew your own commitment to your husband or wife. Please be seated. Who blesses Andrea in her marriage to Justin today? Her mother and I. Okay. I love you so much, Andrea. I love you. All right, you can hold chance. There you go. Good. We have several passages of Scripture we'd like to share with you this morning and then some thoughts as well. In Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 12, it says, Two are better than one, because they have a good reward for their toil. For if they fall, one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him who is alone when he falls and has not another to lift him up. Again, if two lie together, they keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? And though a man might prevail against one who is alone, two will withstand him. A threefold cord is not quickly broken. These beautiful verses, <clears throat> often attributed to the wisdom of Solomon, speak to the benefits of sincere friendship. Two can work better than one, yielding a larger profit. They can help each other in time of need. They can also give emotional comfort to each other. And a third friend, well, that makes it just even better. But as we reflect on this day, however, we can easily draw an analogy of the relationship of husband and wife. Certainly Justin and Andrea, as individuals, have brought much into this world. But just think what they can do together. When times get shaky, they will have each other to lean upon for support and encouragement. I would suggest this evening that the third friend is God. With him as the third strand, their success in marriage is certainly assured. And then we also look into Matthew's Gospel account in chapter 19. He answered, Have you not read that he who created them from the beginning made them male and female? And therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man separate. Marriage is ordained by God. It is the first and the holiest institution established for mankind. God, gave him, God himself gave the first bride away. God himself performed the first wedding ceremony. God himself hallowed and sanctified the first home. And so as we gather here today, we recognize that marriage is an act of God and not of man. And therefore, this unique covenant is not to be entered into unadvisedly or lightly, but with reverence and with the recognition of God as its author. Into this covenant, Justin and Andrea now come to be joined. Justin, will you take Andrea to be your wedded wife, to live together in the covenant of marriage? Will you love her, comfort her, 
honor and keep her in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, be faithful to her as long as you both shall live? I will. Andrea, will you have Justin to be your wedded husband, to live together in the covenant of marriage? Will you love him, comfort him, honor and keep him in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, be faithful to him as long as you both shall live? I will. It is our understanding then that you both come freely and without reservation, desiring to commit yourselves to one another in this covenant of marriage. We, we do. do. <laughs> Will all of you then, witnessing these promises, do all in your power to uphold these two persons in their marriage? And together we say, we will. Let us pray. Our Father, as Andrea and Justin come this day to commit themselves to one another, we ask that your blessing and your grace be shed upon them. May Andrea and Justin, these two, be made one today. And Father, may their union be made pleasing in your sight through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Nathan will now come and share a reading from Colossians. Colossians 3, 12 through 14. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Thank you. And now Mary will come and read from 1 Corinthians 13. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast. It is not proud, it does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, and it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. Andrea and Justin. I believe I can speak on behalf of everyone here that it is a true joy to be here and to be part of this glorious day, even though it's a little cloudy. It's still good. <laughs> <laughs> to be surrounded by family and friends, those who care deeply for both of you. And that was certainly evident in uh, some of the things that were shared yesterday evening uh, that we heard. After the service day, I'm going to sign a piece of paper called a marriage license that you all have obtained and forward it to the state of Virginia. They're going to return it to you in the form of a marriage certificate. <clears throat> Everyone who's been married in the Commonwealth of Virginia has one of these. Some people take it and put it in a nice frame and hang it up on the wall in their house, although they're not as pretty as they used to be. Some might even take it and put it in a lockbox for security in a safe of some kind. But I want to tell you a secret. Just between the three of us, regardless of what you do with that piece of paper, it is exactly that, just a piece of paper. <clears throat> that piece of paper is not a marriage. In fact, everything that we are doing today is not a marriage. Now, don't get me wrong. This is a glorious day. It's wonderful to be in this place and to share together with you with all these people, witnessing your vows to one another. But as wonderful as it is to be here, do not be confused. This is a marriage ceremony and a wedding. It is not a marriage. What makes a marriage is what follows this day. What makes a marriage is what you do tomorrow and the next day, the following weeks and months and years. Much has happened since the first day that you all met each other that we found out also about. <clears throat> Obviously during that time that you've learned to love and to appreciate being with one another. There have been those acts of thoughtfulness and words of encouragement. You've gained a respect for each other's qualities, strength to resolve, trustworthiness, and kindness. <clears throat> and as you remain faithful to the vows that you are about to make, 
Your life together will be a blessing both to you and to those that are around you. The passage of scripture read just a few moments ago by Amelia, I believe provides great advice for those who are entering into a marriage covenant. In fact, it contains sound advice for all of us to follow in our daily walk of life. It's found in 1 Corinthians 13. In what is often called the love chapter of the Bible, interestingly, as beautiful as it is, it is not about romantic love. The love that Paul speaks <coughs> about, rather, <coughs> is a behavior that we live out even when we do not feel loving or lovable. Paul opens his thoughts with these words in verse 4. He begins, love is patient and kind. Quite honestly, sometimes you all are going to get stressed out, <laughs> believe it or not. Sometimes you might even be frustrated. Nowhere does it say that marriage is going to be a piece of cake, trouble-free. Remember in those stressful times that love is patient and love is kind. Andrea and Justin, sometimes you might even want to give some harsh criticism when the other does something foolish or hurtful. Keep in mind, love is patient and kind. Second, Paul tells us that love isn't envious or boastful. At times, we try to make ourselves look better than we really are. We may even criticize our partner to make us feel better about ourselves. Our competitive spirits, which I'm sure that neither of you have, <laughs> may get the best of you, and you may try to prove that you are better, maybe smarter, more professional, maybe even ta more talented than the other. But that kind of behavior in a marriage will prove to be unproductive, even destructive. The alternative is much more worthwhile and enjoyable. Be proud of each other, build each other up, and learn to praise the unique God-given gifts of your life's partner. Paul's next advice is to avoid arrogance and rudeness. Paul knows that sometimes we treat those that we love the most with less courtesy than we even treat a stranger. And that seems kind of strange, but it is a real phenomenon. We may take our spouses for granted. Occasionally, we may even be rude to them in private. Even worse, we might be rude to them in public. Paul would urge us to strive to treat our spouse with reverence and respect, just like we would want him or her to treat us. Be reminded in times like this that you are looking across to God's gift to you of a companion for life. Of all the ideals that Paul holds up before us, this next one may be the hardest. Love does not insist upon its own way. Now, Andrea, Justin, I'm going to assume that there have been times in your relationship, even up to now, that one or both of you have insisted on having your own way. <laughs> well, you're not alone. Such behavior is present in most relationships, but you know what, it's really not helpful at all. Marriage is intended to be a journey filled with compromises. And as both of you are willing to compromise, as both of you are willing to respond to the wants and to the needs of the other, and not just your own, then your marriage will be much more uh, peaceful and productive. As the me and my gives way to the us and ours, your lives will grow closer and closer together. Paul's next description of love is difficult to follow. He tells us that love is not irritable or resentful. I wonder if there's anyone here that has never been irritable. I don't need a show of hands. <laughs> In fact, most of us fail to live out this particular quality of love. Rather than being pleasant, we are sometimes easily irritated or angered. Rather than politely answering a simple question of a spouse, we respond with a loud or a hostile voice. Too often, we respond by becoming argumentative and defensive. I believe that Paul would urge of all of us that when we fail to live up to this ideal, we avoid making excuses for our behavior and simply admit that we are wrong. Sorry, I've been in a bad mood today. Let's start over. Goes a long way in the mending process. Paul's model of Christian love may even suggest a strange double standard. When our spouse is irritable, we are to be patient. When we are irritable, we are to ask for forgiveness. And so as the two of you live by this advice, there will be peace in your home. Paul goes on to say that love does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in truth. 
Andrea and Justin, this means that you should have strong principles and a sense of justice, which I believe that you do. You should care about the welfare of those around you, especially those who are vulnerable in this world. You should celebrate when life is victorious and when love wins out over hate and when forgiveness wins out over resentment. Lastly, Paul sums up his beautiful description of love with these words, love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. In other words, love never gives up. It hangs in there through the thick and thin, through the good and the bad. It holds on with tenacity to this relational gift from God. It exemplifies to the world that what you have together is something that can be counted on. Andrea and Justin, this is the type of love that you are to have for one another. Love that goes beyond conventional wisdom and demonstrates what a God-centered marriage looks like. My prayer for the two of you is that you will continue to grow in love, love for one another, love for God, love for your families, and love for your neighbor. If you do this, you will not only have a blessed marriage, but you will have a blessed life. Paul concludes with this thought and promise, while many other things may come and go in life, love never fails. Hold on to that. And so, Andrea and Justin, I invite you to come and begin the adventure of your marriage by declaring your vows to one another in the presence of God and in the presence of God's people. So turn now and face each other and clasp hands. <clears throat> if you will, repeat after me. I, Justin Tanner Kleiber. I, Justin Tanner Kleiber. Take you, Andrea Lillian Schumann. Take you, Andrea Lillian Schumann. To be my wife. To be my wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. For this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poor. For richer, for poor. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Until we are parted by death. Until we are parted by death. This is my solemn vow. This is my solemn vow. I, Andrea Lillian Schumann. I, Andrea Lillian Schumann. Take you, Justin Tanner Kleiber. Take you, Justin Tanner Kleiber. To be my husband. To be my husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poor. For richer, for poor. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Until we are parted by death. Until we are parted by death. This is my solemn vow. This is my solemn vow. Justin, do you have a token of your love and affection to give to your bride, a seal of this holy covenant? I do. And what is it? It's a ring. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> As he holds it on her ring finger, throughout the ages and, <clears throat> and among many peoples, the ring has been a symbol of that which is measureless. And thus, in this holy hour, a symbol of your measureless, boundless devotion. It is a circle having neither beginning nor ending, so your commitment should also be unending. It is made of gold, a precious metal. So also is your commitment to Andrea precious. Today, this ring will be given as your sign and seal of this commitment to Andrea. <clears throat> so holding it there on her wedding finger, please repeat after me. As a symbol of my vow. As a symbol of my vow. With this ring, I thee wed. With this ring, I thee wed. With loyal love I thee endow. With loyal love I thee endow. All my worldly goods with thee I share. All my worldly goods with thee I share. And with them I give you myself. And with them I give you myself. Andrea, do you have a token of your love and affection to give to your husband, a seal of this holy covenant? I do. And what is it? This ring. Okay. <clears throat> and place it on his ring finger. Invested with the same significance as the ring that you have just received, so this ring is a circle of precious gold indicating the longevity of your love and pricelessness of your devotion. So please repeat after me. As a symbol of my vow. As a symbol of my vow. With this ring I thee wed. With this ring I thee wed. With loyal love I thee endow. With loyal love I thee endow. All my worldly goods with thee I share. All my worldly goods with thee I share. And with them I give you myself. And with them I give you myself. Let us pray. Father, you have created man and woman and did design them to be together, 
We ask your grace to be shed upon Andrea and Justin as they come before you this day. The commitments that they have made to one another today are commitments which will take your strength to fulfill. And so, Lord, we do ask for your strength for them. The life together which they begin today will take your wisdom to be lived successfully. We do ask for your wisdom for them. Their problems which beset all of us will take your encouragement to overcome. We ask that your encouragement be theirs. May Justin and Andrea find their reward in thee, O God, through Jesus Christ, their Lord and Savior. And now may God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless, preserve, and keep you. The Lord graciously with his favor look upon you and so fill you with all spiritual blessings and love that you may so live together in this life that in the world to come you may have life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Justin and Andrea have chosen to observe communion together this special day. So I'm going to allow them to move back <clears throat> for this, this solemn moment between themselves. The Lord's Supper is symbolic of unconditional love, which was demonstrated by God the Father in sending His Son, Jesus, to die for our sin. The elements, the bread, and the juice represent His body, which was freely given, and His blood that was freely shed. Scripture says that without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. For the believer, <clears throat> Jesus is atoning sacrifice upon the cross. It is a time of invitation, of celebration, and of consecration. Invitation in that Jesus invited his disciples the night before his death to join him in observance of the first Lord's Supper. In a matter of hour, his life's work on earth would be finished as he prepared himself and them for his death. Celebration in that <clears throat> Jesus would not remain in the grave, <clears throat> but rose again victorious over sin and death. Those who trust in him as God's chosen source of atonement would never live life the same. Life would have a new meaning as a redeemed child of God. And lastly, as consecration, in that Jesus encouraged his followers to observe this often, that we might not forget what he did through his life and death and resurrection, and also to look forward with expectation of the day when he will return in glory to receive us to himself, that where he is, we will be with him always. Now's the time. For as much as Justin and Andrea has consented together in holy matrimony and have witnessed the same before God in this assembly of family and friends and have committed themselves completely to each other in the covenant of marriage by the authority invested in me by Almighty God as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ and under the regulations established by the Commonwealth of Virginia, I do pronounce that they are now husband and wife. What God has joined together let no man put asunder. Justin, you may kiss your bride. I right, turn and face the crowd. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to present to you for the very first time, Mr. and Mrs. Justin and Andrea Cliver. Ladies and gentlemen, the parents and grandparents and family members are going to remain here for just a few moments to take a few more photos. We would encourage the rest of the friends and other members to please go down to the uh, 
to the side yard over here where there'll be some refreshments for you to enjoy uh, waiting for a little bit later on. So please, you're dismissed at this time. <laughs>